I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. There are lots of resources available to help you if you visit my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page which links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books I have available. If it is that you're working to actually taking this exam, I've written a book, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of tips and techniques of how to best make use of the preparation leading up to your exam and also how to best make use of the time when you're actually sitting in the exam room taking the paper. There's lots of handy hints there. So if you visit SharonBill.com, there's lots there to help you. If you give me a like, that'd be fab, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's loads more in store. I'm really enjoying working through this music theory series. I hope you are too. And so let's crack on. And so if you'll turn with me to page 32, and we're just looking at simple phrase structure. So I'm going to refer to this this section K and so if you turn in your theory PDF document to section K what I'm going to explain will also be summarized on this sheet too. Now this also refers back to the rhythms that we did in section I so we've already really done the thinking for this and there's lots of examples so I do suggest that you read through the information on pages 32 and 33 and then I've summarised that for you in the PDF document. However, we're just looking at the structure of phrases and if we turn to page 34, we can look at that on the hoof as it were. So we're going to add brackets, so really these aren't phrase marks as such because phrase marks is to do with articulation, how things are performed, we're just looking at the musical structure, the mechanics of how a piece of music is divided and each piece of music is divided into sections right the way up until perhaps, perhaps past the classical period into the romantic period, so it's the late romantic and into the 20th century that this kind of doesn't become um, a formula. Before that, music has always tended to be divided into equal sections. And we can look at how those sections are made up. So for example, in exercise one, we can see that we have a phrase of one, two, three, four. And it helps if you just hum through the gist of that melody. And you can see, you can work it out just by maths, but at least you can see the flow of the music. Dum, da, 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 dum, dum, da, dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum. You don't have to sing it perfectly, as I've just adequately demonstrated, but you can see that it forms a four bar phrase. And so that will continue one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you can very easily see how that is exactly mirrored in the rhythm. One, two, three, four, so also is that. However, not always is it quite so obvious, and sometimes we have an anacrisis or an upbeat, and we did already deal with this in your theory section I with the rhythms, and you can see that you've got an upbeat of one beat, we have one full bar, and then the phrase is ended with a beat and so we've got a mini complete unit that adds up this bit and this bit completes a bar and then you've got one full bar and so the pattern will continue where we've got one beat as an upbeat, a full bar, the phrase ends on a beat. Whether it's two quavers or one crotchet or anything is irrelevant, it's the time frame that matters and so you can see that continues upbeat of a beat one full bar, phrase ends with a beat, those two add up to complete the bar. 
and then that is shown overall how the beginning and the end of the extract add up to make a bar. So we get it in an overall sense and also in miniature within each phrase. It's as if the, the timing has been shunted back a beat over the bar line really. And so really we can just work it out in terms of maths. Sometimes there are a few grey areas where there's a rest or the timing unit values might change but the maths will always work out in these examples. And so what they're asking us to do is to add these brackets to show how the phrases fall in each extract. So here we will be going one, two, three, four. Definitely need a ruler for this bit here. So here's the next phrase, one, two, three, four. If you hum the melody through, you'll see the flow of how that works. One, two, three, four, we know we're right. That's easy peasy because there's no anacrusis, there's no upbeat. Whereas here, we've got an anacrusis or an upbeat, so we've got a quaver. Although it's two semiquavers, the mathematical equivalent is a quaver or an eighth note. We get a full bar and they get one and a half beats because then the next phrase will begin again with a quaver. So we've got only got one full bar and then this three quarter, this um, one and a half beat, this three quarters of a bar will add up again as if the phrasing has been shunted over the bar line. So we know that this is the beginning of the next phrase. We've got one full bar and then we've got one and a half beats to complete this unit and then this next, this half beat here begins the next phrase. And so now I've almost completed that for you. If you want to get to the end of that, just as a little practice run, press pause and then have a go. So I'm hoping you've had a little go of that yourself. And so we know that we need one complete bar an upbeat of half and then we've got one and a half beats to here to complete the bar so we're going to have to just go show that it goes over the line I guess the page has got to run out at some point so we have to just extend it over now here there's a bit of a grey area because we've got a rest but if you think about it we've got semiquaver semiquaver or sixteenth notes which make a half so semiquaver semiquaver two sixteenth notes the fact that one's a rest isn't really um, material value in terms of our maths if you're performing it of course that makes a difference but nevertheless that be those make a half a beat that's the beginning that's the upbeat to our phrase and then one and a half beats there finishes that phrase so we know we're right Ooh, so I'm going to have to go a bit higher because of that high B. Oh no, D, we're in the bass clef. There we go. And so over the page we have quite a few examples of that. And it's all working on the same theme. There's nothing of um, uh, very complicated. It's just if you glance down, sometimes they don't give you the first section. And also, sometimes maybe we might just shuffle things along by half a beat or so on because if there's a tied note it can't really belong to the next phrase it's got to belong to the first phrase but it averages out in the end so there might be a few little grey areas that just require a bit of extra thought but the principle remains the same each time so press pause have a go of those and then we'll come back onto these together so then Exercise C, we have an upbeat of one beat. We have one, two complete bars. Let's just sharpen the pencil. Oh, mill. Two complete bars. And then we have two beats here, which would make a complete bar. And that will, that's a miniature of what will be reflected in the whole. 
and so we've got one, two complete bars, an upbeat and two beats. So there's the end of that, that's that phrase. Swap pencils, I'm running out of lead there. Okay, so we need an upbeat of one beat. We're in the text there a bit, never mind the title. We have two complete bars and then the phrase ends with two beats. So that's that. Just nip over the title there. Then we have an upbeat of one beat. Whether it's a single beat or what adds up to a single beat is um, not of material value to us, of course, to the performer, that does make a difference. But in our maths, that's still part of the phrase. Two complete bars and two. Um, hey presto, we've ended correctly. And as each phrase balances out, so does the whole. We've got one plus two at the end completes our bar. Okay, next one. Hope you've had a go of this one. So we have one complete bar, we have an upbeat of one beat, one complete bar, and then three beats here, and that three, oh, I suppose I should show that as a, a note really, and that three plus one equals four. We've only got one complete bar, so we can go back to the beginning now and just add the phrases accordingly so we have one full bar one upbeat and then one two three beats and that's our phrase based upon what they've given us we have one complete bar an upbeat and three beats so there's our next phrase there's our upbeat one complete bar one, two, three, and there we go. It's worked in with what they've given us. So just over the line. There we go. Okay, so this next one, I hope you've had a go. One complete bar, two crotchet beats, which counts as a minimum beat. Bear in mind we're counting two, two here. So we have one minim beat, a full bar, one minim beat. And that one minim beat plus one minim beat equals our bar and that will be balanced out over the whole. So we've only got one complete bar in each phrase. So there's our upbeat of a minim or a half note, one complete bar, minim. So there is our phrase. Minim upbeat. The fact that that's made up of lots of different note combinations is irrelevant. It still adds up. We've got a crotchet, quaver, semi, semi. That all makes one minim beat. One full bar. One minim beat to end the phrase. There's our upbeat of one minim beat. One full bar, one minim beat. There we go. Ooh, I think I went a bit diagonal there. Okay, next one. And this is one where it's sort of, there's a little bit of a grey area we just have to think about. So we're in six, eight. We've got one, two, three full bars. We have here a quaver upbeat and then here we've got five quavers to even that out. So here we can see there's our quaver upbeat, one, two, three full bars, one, two, th three, okay. Now this is where it seems a little bit awry because that doesn't match with that but overall one, two, three, four, five, six, the math will average out. We just need to make sure we've got one, two, three full bars and then here's our one, two, three, four, five. There's our quaver upbeat for the next 
section so we know we're heading off in the right direction there. One, two, three full bars and then one, two, three, four, five because the five quaver beats or eighth notes plus the one here at the beginning of the phrase makes our bar and that will reflect through the whole piece apart from the ending just kind of shuffles a little bit so one two three full bars there's our upbeat and this is changed one two three instead of five it's just changed we've just lost a couple of beats of rest at the end so that the maths adds up with the first bar but in principle you can see that the phrase is musically balanced out okay now this next one it looks like there isn't any anacrusis at all because we've got half one half two we've got two full beats in that bar half one half two two full beats there we've got one two three four bars one two three of those are full and then we've got the upbeat here just because the notes tied over and so sometimes there will be a tie over sometimes there will be a rest so it's almost four full bars but we've got this little discrepancy of a half a beat of either rest or tie the rest is kind of almost no man's land and so we need to just make sure we've got the three full beats, full bars, pardon me. So one, two, three full bars. And then this rest kind of comes in the middle of nowhere, really. So we could either include that in or really, that's kind of a bit no man's land, isn't it? So that's the end of that one. Let's see what happens before one two three four bars there's our with the rest up beats kind of no man's land one two three four and so we can they've chosen to begin that there that's there and so i suggest that what we will as they've ended on the actual bar line they've chosen to leave that in no man's land they haven't extended it over to show that there's an anacrusis and so because they've chosen to end on the bar line so will we so we go into there so there's this like no man's land area here but we'll end on the bar line end on the bar line so that's like a slightly innocuous one there there we go nevertheless the principle remains i hope that's been helpful to you if you can give me a like that'd be fab um if you can subscribe to my channel that'd be great there's loads more to come i've got tons in the pipeline please do go to sharonbill.com there's loads there to help you so do access all that's available there thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.